Physical Fairy Tales presents King Midas and the Golden Touch. There once lived a very rich king called King Midas. Nothing in this world is more precious than gold. I love its soft yellow hue. Ah, just feel that comforting weight in the palm of my hand. A sound sweeter to me than the songs of my finest musicians. Listen. A finer sound has never been played than clink, clink, clink. There was only one thing King Midas loved more than gold, and that was his daughter, Princess Aurelia. Father! Oh, hello, children. I am Aurelia, Princess Aurelia, and I love flowers. My favorite is roses. All sorts of roses. Our gardens have the most lovely roses that come from all around the world. Father, look at this one. It is redder than the reddest ruby, sweeter smelling than <sighs> baby powder, the smell of which I like very much. Ho, <laughs> ho, really? I once loved roses as much as you, which is why I have grown such a vast and varied garden of them around our palace. I once called together the best gardeners in my realm, and the garden they created has become renowned for its beauty and its variety of roses. But one day, you will have something much more valuable than roses. I shall bequeath to you the greatest treasury of gold in all the world. Gold is more enchanting than delicate fragrances and exquisite colours. Gold, Aurelia! I prefer roses, Father. Here, put this one on our breakfast table. <laughs> Thank you, I shall. Their beauty lasts but a day, Aurelia. Then they wither away. <laughs> but if they were gold, they would last forever. Oh, Father... One day, the king's guards found a raggedy old man sleeping under the rose bushes. They captured him and brought him before the king. I know. Your majesty, do not punish me. I was on a long journey, became weary and needed a bit of a rest. I must have dozed off. Please do not punish me. Unbind him. He has done nothing wrong. If he were as wealthy as I... You would not treat him thus. And if I did not have all my gold, I may very easily be as raggedy as he and find comfort among the roses. No, he shall dine with us tonight. So the raggedy old man was treated to a sudsy bath, soft new clothing and sturdy leather boots. Then he was invited to join King Midas and Princess Aurelia and all the court for an evening feast. They shared stories of their adventures, and King Midas played and sang for the raggedy old man. I love gold. I want gold. I've been a miner for lots of gold. It makes me happy to see it shining. I keep searching for lots of gold. Oh, yes, lots of gold. Oh, Father! Aurelia danced with the ladies of the court while the court musicians played and played. Everyone had a lovely time and all went to bed happy. The raggedy old man was given a guest bedroom where he slept soundly and peacefully till late the next morning. Many hearty thanks, good king, for your hospitality. Ah, oh, my good man. Thank you for sharing the evening with us. You are always welcome here. Farewell, and take good care of yourself. Take this rose, old man, to cheer you on your journey. The old man took the rose, smiled, and set off on his journey. Now, King Midas 
as he did every day, went down into his dungeons. Ah, here we are, my secret chamber, where I keep all my gold. First, the big brass key to unlock the door. There we are. Uh, big push. Close it. Mm. Uh, and lock it behind me. Ah, I do love my precious gold. <laughs> 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I love counting my coins. No matter how hard I work, no matter how long I live, I will never have enough. He was lost in these thoughts when his secret chamber was suddenly filled with light. King Midas looked up and was amazed to behold the glowing figure of a young man. But the door is locked. You must be a result of magic. Mon ami, do you not recognize me? No, 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 not at all. But your presence makes all my gold glitter even more brightly. Are you friend or foe? Shall I welcome you or fear you? I appear to you now as my true self, a young man of light. But I am the same old man from your rose garden. Instead of punishing me for trespassing, you entertained me at your table. I appear here before you to offer you a reward for your kindness. But with so much gold, you must certainly want for nothing. No, that's not true. A man can never have enough gold. Are we? Uh, what would make you a happier man? Um, I don't know offhand. Um... Perhaps, um, if everything I touch turned to gold. Yes, that's it. That is your wish? Yes, for then gold would always bit my fingertips. Think carefully, mon ami. Wise choices take time and thought. Take your time in deciding. The golden touch is what I want. The golden touch would bring me all the happiness I need. My lord, it shall be yours. And with that... The mysterious young man of light became brighter and brighter until his light became so intense that King Midas had to close his eyes. Whoa! What a light! Young man, he's gone. As mysteriously as he appeared. Now then, how's his enchantment worked? Let me see. Ah, this key, it is merely brass. If I touch it like this, it should turn to gold. No? Yeah. Ha! Maybe I've been dreaming. Ha oh, what a lovely dream. Speaking of dreams, it's time I went to bed. When the king awoke the following morning, he found his bedchamber bathed in a golden glow, glistening in the morning sun. The plain linen bedclothes had been transformed into finely spun gold. He held on to the bedpost as he leapt out of bed and... The bedpost turned to solid gold. My slippers. As soon as he slid his feet into them, they turned to solid gold. Oh, a little difficult to walk in. No matter, <laughs> they are gold. He put on his royal clothing. And they, too, instantaneously transformed into glorious spun gold. A little heavy. No matter. They are gold. On went his spectacles. Gold. Granted, he could not see out the solid gold lenses, but no matter. They are gold. The king ran around gleefully, touching and transforming everything in his palace. Gold. 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 Then raced out into the garden and touched each and every bloom. He did not notice that they became so heavy that they drooped on their stems. It did not seem to matter to him that their lovely aroma disappeared from the garden. It glittered bright, golden yellow, and that pleased the king. Gold! Soon it was time for breakfast, and guess what turned to gold then? The tablecloth, the plate, 
<laughs> my fault! Yes, everything he touched turned to gold! The royal breakfast server placed a warm bowl of porridge before the king, just as Aurelia entered crying bitterly and carrying a golden rose on a bent stem. Oh, father, a horrible thing has happened. I went into the garden to pick you a flower, but all the roses have become yellow and hard. They are golden roses now, my love. And will never fade. But I miss their scent, father, and they're so cold against my cheek. Oh, I'm sorry, my darling. I thought only to please you. But now you can buy all the roses you could ever wish for. Please wipe your eyes and join me for breakfast. Ah, what have we here? A warm and comforting porridge. Look, Aurelia, my spoon has turned to gold. Mmm, I am quite hungry this morning. Oh, my teeth! What is this? My porridge has turned to gold too. Oh, no matter. I'll have one of these figs. Ouch! This fig has turned to solid gold. Ah, a slice of bread. No. Uh, cheese? No. Jam. Gold as well. How am I to eat? What's wrong, father? Nothing, nothing at all, my child. I have gotten what I wished for. But how am I to eat? I am hungry now. I'll be famished by dinner. What shall I do? Will I ever eat again? Dear, dear father, please do not cry. Aurelia scampered over to her father's side of the table to give him a big hug. The king took her hands in his and, to his horror, his beloved daughter turned into a statue of solid gold, a single golden tear still on her cheek. No! 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 What have I done? King Midas howled in anguish all through the day, oh! not daring to leave his daughter's side. All the household mourned with him. No glittering gold could lift the horror and unhappiness that had settled over the palace that day. Nighttime came. The king continued to weep, more quietly now as he was quite exhausted. The moon was full, and the sea outside the palace glittered silver in the moonlight. And who should appear in that moonlight? But the young man who had granted him his wish. Bonsoir, King Midas. Are you not the happiest of men? Oh, no. I am the most miserable of men. What? Did I not grant you the wish of the golden touch? Yes, but it is a curse to me now. All that I truly loved is out of my reach, gone forever. I am cursed with the golden touch. Do you mean to say you would choose a crust of bread or a cup of cool water over the gift of the golden touch? Oh yes. I would give up all the gold in the world if only my daughter were restored to me. Ah, oh, it seems you have had a change of heart. My dear friend, gold is a wonderful thing, but it is worthless compared to the love of one's child, the flavours in a well-cooked meal, the beauty and aroma of a fresh rose. Mm, all of those things can be within your reach again. Oh, please help me. Please help me to put things right. Alors, listen carefully. Make your way to the river that flows from the sea outside your palace. Follow the river upstream until you reach its source. Dive in. Let the foaming waters return you to yourself. Take a vase with you and fill it with that water so you can pour it on anything you want to restore to its original state. Au revoir, my friend. And with that, the mysterious young man vanished. Oh, thank you, my friend. Young man, he's gone. No matter. I must do as he says at once. The king did just as he was instructed. He followed the sea outside his palace to the river. 
then followed the river until he reached its source. There he dove in, bathed himself in its waters, and watched all traces of gold float away. He filled a vase with the special water, returned to his palace, and straight away dripped water over his daughter's head. As soon as the drops fell on her, she became again her lovely self. Oh, father, what has happened? I feel as though I have awakened from a deep sleep. My dear Aurelia, all is well. <laughs> all is well once again. The king and Princess Aurelia hugged each other long and heartily. Then the king dripped water on each and everything he had turned to gold except one single rose. And do you know why? I kept one golden rose as a reminder of the curse of the golden touch. The, the end. end. Excellent.